Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Just the Tips. Today we're going to learn how to test our color scheme without using any paints. So let's get to the lab. Alright, we are now on the computer, so we can start doing our little color scheme test. First, we're going to grab our image editing software. And for that, I'm choosing GIMP. Why GIMP, do you ask? Well, Steven, it's like Photoshop, but free. Anyway, we're going to start by downloading the program here, of course, installing it on the computer, and then we can launch it. Boom, it is launching. We wait. And we have our program here. Now, we need a picture. This one should be fairly easy. Just grab a picture of the model you're interested in. Preferably something with a white background because it's going to make it easier to clean it up later. Today I'm going to choose our little Tyranid guy here. Why? Because I need views. Also it's cute. So what I do now is I grab my image, right click, copy the image and I just paste it in GIMP. And there we go. Next step is to get our picture in black and white. For that I just go to image at the top and I grab mode and I put it in grayscale. Everything is gray now, which is great. If we want to put color on it, we need to switch our mode back. So we go back to mode and then we put it in RGB. If we don't do that, any color we put is going to read as gray again. Okay, now I'm going to do a little cleanup so we can focus on the mini that I'm interested in. I just grab him, selection, right click, image, crop to selection. Boom. And then I'm going to do zoom because it's very small now. Yeah, that's great. Okay, now we have our picture in black and white. What do we do now? We add color. But we're not going to put color directly on the image. We're going to add a new layer that's going to contain all the colors. So what we do now, we go at the bottom right here, a little plus button, create a new layer. Layer, I don't care. You can name it whatever you want. If you have a special scheme in mind that you want to test, just name it that, I guess. We have a new layer here, which is on top of the pasted picture, which is exactly what we want. And now we grab our paintbrush, which is our little icon here. You can also use P as a shortcut. Next, we need to choose our color. I'm going to be fairly unoriginal and try out the High Fleet Leviathan first. So I go on our little square here to go grab a new color, a nice purple like this one. Yeah, okay, good. And we can start painting directly on the picture. But what is happening? Oh no, I'm hiding all my mini. That is terrible. What do I do now? That's where the setting for a new layer is important. You go back to our layer here on the right, make sure it's selected, great. And now we need to change its mode. It's set to normal, which gives us the result you're seeing here. It's just normal layer. I paint on top of what I have at the bottom, all good. But what I want is for my top layer to be somewhat transparent so I can see the values underneath. So for that, I need to change this mode. And we're gonna click on it and select multiply. Boom, now I see everything underneath, great. And now I can apply all the other colors I want. Let's grab a sort of pale pink here for the limb and I can start painting. I don't have to be super clean about how I apply the colors, but I try to be somewhat neat. With my brush circle being way too big here, I'm gonna make it smaller by using the brackets on the keyboard. Now it's good and I can go in all the bits that I want to be flesh colors. I know I'm going over some purple bits that I've already painted, but I don't really care about it because I'm going to do cleanup later on. The important bit is to be fast because this technique allows me to try out a bunch of different desking very quickly. There we go. The fleshy bits are done. I'm going to go back to my purple. Previously, you can see it here in the previous colors I've used, and I'm just going to do a very small cleanup pass. I don't really care if I go over some bits too much. It's, it's fine. I just need a global sense of what I'm doing. Now I need to grab a sort of blue-black-ish color and then just put it on the gun like so. And the claws. And now what we want are the pinky bits. I'm gonna go for a sort of reddish magenta and just gonna go for all the joints. Yes, joints, joints and the eyes, why not? He's got pink eyes now. Okay, now I'm done applying all the colors I want, so I'm gonna do a very small cleanup. What I do is very simple. I just click on my image layer. I go to select the magic wand or press U. 
So now I just click on the white bits and that selects it. Everything white here is selected, not the terrain itself, just the white background, which is why I chose a picture with a white background. I can go and also select the bits in between the legs by pressing shift and clicking on them and they're added to the selection. Perfect, now I've selected all the background I want so I can go to my layer and do my cleanup with a simple press of the delete key. Bam! It's all nice and cleaned up. Now I can leave it at that or if I wanted to work on it a bit more I can just press this little button here atop of the layer you can see it's just to lock the alpha of the layer which means if I click it and then deselect everything I've selected by the wand and I go back to my paintbrush select a different color let's pick this red and I try to paint outside of the layer it doesn't work which is good so now if let's say I paint over my colors back it's gonna stay inside Okay, that was very quick and now we can add more color schemes. I just simply add a new layer like this one for a second color scheme. I first turn off the visibility of my previous layer by clicking on this eye button here and I have a fresh new layer to start painting. So what do we do now? First we don't forget to set our layer to multiply and then how about some red skin? Like this and a black carapace like so and why not the little bits in between with a fluo green let's make this super exotic and now we got the one for the cleanup boom you can see I'm getting a small artifact here on the tail. I could go back with the brush to clean it up, but I don't really care. I would just want a quick, easy scheme test. And this is just that. Okay, let's do one more. For this one, I want to try out a bit of blending. Let's do a reddish brown carapace first. A sort of off-white body here. Like so. And now I want to test something special. I want to try and have a blend going on the gun and the limbs a bit. So I'm going to grab the color I want. I want to go for a sort of very flashy orange like this maybe. What do I need to do now? I need to change my brush. So I go next to the brush thing on the little icon here. It gives me a small panel where I can select the shape of my brush. I had a very hard brush at first which was great for very clean defined areas. But since I want to blend here I'm going to grab this one which has very smooth edges. So now I apply it to the areas I'm interested in, like the end of the gun here, the end of the loadings thingy magic, and also the limbs. As you can see it gives me a very smooth transition where I didn't apply the color. You can also use it to do some sort of OSL effect. I want to push up that blend and have the end of it be red as well. But if I do it with this brush now, you can see it's very red, a bit too much for my taste. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna change the opacity of my brush here. I'll put it at around 40. And now I can go back to the end of my gun and apply it so. You see, it's very subtle now. And there we go. Very happy with it. Now let's ruin all that by adding another pop color. I'm gonna grab a blue to contrast with the orange. I'm going back to my hard brush full opacity and apply it where I want. I'll make the claws dark red because I think I got enough colors as is. And I'm gonna change the inside of the joints because I think having them blue is a bit much. And bam we got our third Tyranid. Now I can just save pictures of all the color scheme I tested. I can also just switch back between them by disabling or enabling their visibility. And if we put all of them together, it looks ugly! Now that I have all my color scheme I want to try out, I can just save a picture for all of them. I go to File, Not Save As, because that just saves a GIMP project. I go to Export and just save my file. And that's the trick. Honestly, choosing the image and which colors to use is the hardest bit. Try and get images with white background because it's gonna make the cleanup easier. You still want a clean result and can't get a background with a single color. You'll just have to pick the eraser and erase all the bits where you went over. 
Let's just take more time. Also, if you can, I'll say grab an image with lighter color on, because since we're making our color layers transparent, if you could try and put colors over a very dark image, you're not gonna be able to go brighter without using more opaque paint. So choose wisely. Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this little trick and I'll be seeing you later for more hot tips. But in the meantime, I hope you keep painting because painting is cool.